you're gonna get some you're gonna get some creativity juice today. We're gonna to talk about a little bit about marketing and then uh, for one hour and then we're gonna have a break and then we're gonna go into a second hour. It's a combination masterclass. We're gonna go into a second hour with Sandy Parker about creativity. And we've gone through this together. We've worked with each other. We've helped each other in a few different, in a few different ways and had some sessions together. And oh boy, get ready, buckle up. We're gonna have some fun. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, what I'm gonna show you today is something called the Giver Marketing Blueprint. Um, but let me get this, the, this, the screen kind of large for you guys to see. Can everybody see that? Stacy? can you see it? Sandy, can you see that kind of coming up gradually here? Okay, so again, you're, you're in the marketing meets creativity combination masterclass and get ready for a two hour awesomeness <laughs> experience. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about the Giver Marketing 30 day challenge, you can go to givermarketing.com slash challenge. And um, many of you have been uh, involved with this at one point or another, but what you're about to experience is session number one in that challenge. So you'll get a head start on that for those who wanna participate in that, okay? All right, so here we go. What is this blueprint that, that Timothy Morgan and, and Stacy Stockford and Sandy Parker and others talk about, and Lacey's here with us today, others talk about when it comes to your marketing. Well, it's a foundational piece that as the founder and CEO of Giver Marketing and the Giver Marketing Network, I have the privilege of sharing all over the world <laughs> with as many people as possible because marketing can be a little bit difficult sometimes. People tend to get stuck or have roadblocks and we wanna help them kind of release those uh, roadblocks. Stacy, say hi to everybody. You're, you're, you're gonna be participating, helping in the background and making some comments as usual uh, today. Hello everyone, right. welcome, welcome. Thank you. I one will of our be interacting with you guys today. Yep, she's one of our marketing specialists. And if you have any questions, you can also reach out to her and we'll be able to help you. In our 30 day challenge, there's a huge reward just to let you know. Uh, and, and because you're going through this session today, you qualify uh, as a starting point to earn this reward, okay? So if you wanna ask more questions about that, we're glad to be able to give you details. Uh, it's a $1,500 plus value. You end up with a 30 minute session from a certified marketing coach, visibility service, graphic design service upon request. And again, all you have to do is go through the 30 day challenge and grab these seven action assignments, go through them with, uh, with your company or a company you're involved with, and we'll give you that reward. It's not a contest, contest. It's not a raffle, it's an actual bonus and an actual reward for you just for participating, okay? So this is session number one. And uh, we wanna remind everyone who's listening that this is more than leads we're talking about. Marketing, oftentimes when a marketing company goes through a presentation, they're talking about leads, 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 leads. We want more leads. Well, at the end of the day, we, we do want prospects and conversations but it's really, it's really more than leads that we're looking for. Uh, leads are pretty easy to come by, um, but we want those leads to turn into conversations, those conversations to build trust and that trust building process to develop into a meaningful value exchange of some kind. And so uh, our mission is to bring positive attention to causes and companies doing good in the world. We're a coaching first organization. So you're gonna notice that uh, when we have a one-on-one -on -one session or we get into group dynamic or even later in our conversations, we're going to have a lot of questions and dialogue and conversation. So we're, we're very conversational at the core, which allows us to focus more on coaching initially. And then if you need help with any other parts of marketing, we can execute for you. We have 25 plus team members ready to execute for you right now on any aspect of uh, marketing that we uh, are going to cover today. Our tribe is the most trusted network of marketing specialists on the planet. And we're super proud of all the reviews and the kind words that are online. If you Google Giver Marketing Network or Giver Marketing, um, uh, even my name just as the founder, you'll, you'll be able to see kind of some of the kind words. And here's, here's a couple of examples here um, just to kind of let you know that we are an active marketing agency doing good in the world and we love what we do. Uh, we're, we're, we're not a, 
uh, claiming to be gurus per se that are just coming out of college or just trying to do something uh, as far as a marketing career. We, we know what we're doing. Collectively, we have hundreds of years of experience. We work with millions and millions of dollars worth of revenue generating projects between everybody in our network. And so we're proud to be able to serve you. Our core values are here. I won't go through too many uh, in too, too much great detail, but at the end of the day, these core values uh, represent who we are. And so if this is something that aligns with you, then we're super excited uh, that you're here. All right. Who benefits from this training? Well, it's you because you're hungry, you're coachable, you're passionate, you're here, you're investing in yourself right now. Um, ultimately, if you invest, you know, one hour, two hour, three hours of your time, you'll find that that is a great investment for the long term. Um, I, I like to measure um, investment in terms of hours and in terms of finances as well, but uh, you can't you can't buy back more hours. So the, the, the fact that you're investing in yourself right now, I want to give you a, a, a big thumbs up and a big heart right now. Let's give each other some big hearts right now and just say, hey, you're in the right place. Great job. Way to go. Um, this is where you want to be to be able to invest in yourself. OK, so if you're frustrated with marketing and some of the results you've been seeing, just pay close attention because good information plus application equals results. Everybody type the word results in the chat box or in the comment section, results, results, results. That's what we wanna see ultimately. So type in the word results in the chat box or in the comment section. That'll kind of kind of get us all in the frame of mind of, look, we wanna apply this information well, okay? All things being equal, we do business with people we know, like, and trust. Uh, sometimes people will, will shortcut this and that generally short circuits the relationship. So at the end of the day, if, if you have a prospect that you're engaging with and you skip the no like and trust aspect of that engagement and you just try to go right for the sale too quickly, um, then we're going to encourage you to back, just take a step back and look at your marketing as a trust building endeavor. Okay. And this is not a lead generation. Let's close the deal kind of a conversation. This is a, a, Maybe, a, maybe start a conversation, maybe there's some leads coming in, prospecting, then building that trust. And then at that point, especially if you have higher ticket items, um, you wanna definitely follow this protocol. And people will pay more for those they respect. So if you're, if you're selling a low ticket item, you might be able to get away with just selling widgets or selling you know, smaller ticket items just very quickly. And that's fine, but they will pay more to you if they trust you more. And so we want to encourage you to, to help people go along that trust building journey, okay? Marketing blueprint is what we're known for. And after coaching and collaborating with thousands of causes and companies over the last decade, a pattern emerged. And that pattern is basically here on the screen. If, if a company chooses to do these in a, in a reverse order, they, they will see some results. They might even see some quick cash coming from some promotion, but what'll end up happening is they might end up with the wrong clients, customers, and they might spend way too much time and money trying to get those clients and customers. So it's kind of a double negative if you don't start at the branding and visibility aspects of your marketing. So we'll jump into this here now, but know that this is a track. We go left to right, branding, visibility, promotion, then nurturing. Uh, this is the same process we've taken in our Giver Marketing Network with our brand. Uh, this is the same process all of our clients pay attention to really closely because when we help double and triple their revenue, they, they sometimes look at us and go, well, we've been doing some of this stuff already. You're just helping us fine tune it. And we say, yeah, and we're also putting it in the correct order. And so sometimes a company will get the cart before the horse and then they wonder why their horse and buggy isn't going anywhere. And what we do is we just reverse the order, fine tune the process, and then make sure their marketing is a, is a well-oiled machine, okay? So here we go. Let's talk about branding. But before we do that, notice that the four micro assignments associated with today's training, the first hour of today's training, will include... Uh, an assignment connected to branding, then visibility, then promotion, then nurturing in that order. 
So I want to encourage you to, to take five or 10 minutes and execute on those micro assignments so that you can build your own company and do well. This is the same process we take our clients through one-on-one. -on -one, so you might as well get a head start because if we're going to work together on any level, we want to make sure that we're on the same page, okay? Let's define marketing. It's probably one of the most simple definitions I've seen. Mark, it's pre-sales communication. Anything that happens with your audience before a sales meeting or a decision meeting is marketing. Everything they experience on any level associated with you or your company is a marketing experience. So we want to focus in on everything from first impression to the kind of the 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 crumb the crumbs that happen along the way, the buyer's journey, if you will. We want to uh, really look at everything. So there's two types of funnels. There's the marketing funnel, and then there's the sales funnel. Some people call that the you know a sales process or a sales meeting. Uh, ultimately, we focus on that top funnel. So it's important to note that what we're training on today is not sales. Sales is, is, is the art of having a, a conversation to welcome a new client based on buying questions and exchange of value. We're talking about marketing. We're just building the trust so that you can have a sales meeting. And there is a difference. There's a, there's a shift. There's a hat that changes when you're talking to somebody or prospect. So technically marketing, you're gonna be measuring things like conversations, engagement, um, how, how well you were able to follow up, uh, these type of things. Sales, it's really transactions and exchange of value. Transactions and exchange of value. Uh, ultimately, there's some type of commitment that's associated with sales as well. There are pre-commitments, there's pre-exchanges of value, but ultimately sales is about transactions. Marketing is about building that trust through conversations and engagement. So marketing gets you to the red zone if you're an American football fan and sales gets you to the end zone. I love sales just as much as anybody, but we're really good at marketing. So that's what we train on. That's what we talk about. Uh, I, sometimes I wish I was a sales trainer. I enjoy it. I have a personality that would probably do well in doing that, but I, that's not what we're called to. That's not what I'm great at. And that's not what our team is great at. So we focus in on what we're great at. Prospecting is technically marketing, not sales. Notice that there's a lot of, com what we've noticed is there's a lot of confusion out there between marketing and sales. So I have to set the tone for this training that's about to happen right now. All right. Pillar number one, branding. Some people affect, uh, affectionately call this the four spiritual laws of marketing, but here we go. Branding is pillar number one. Michelle Van Otten, I'd like to publicly thank you for the best definition of branding I've ever seen. And you're probably reading it on the screen. What are some of the words that jump out to you? Put them in the chat box. Put them in the comments. What are some of the key words that are jumping out to you? Here's a clue. They're probably bolded. I'm just saying, like, let's, let's, let's start this engine. Let's really get rolling here. Branding, some of the key words. You're reading it on the screen, but th these key words are huge. How people actually experience us in the marketplace. That's your brand. It's not a logo. Wait a minute, Timothy, it's not a logo. It's not your, your color, you know, your coloring. It's not your, you know, it's not like, it's not that logo behind Stacy's head right now. Like that, that's not your brand. No, 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 no. That's an icon representing your brand. Your brand is a totality of experiences found in the marketplace that helps people remember and it carves out a memory and, and, and helps them rem kind of remember the, the, the experiences they've had with you and the reputation that's starting to form initially, okay? Marketing is communication. If that's the case, then branding is how people feel when they experience your company. It's another way to say a similar thing. But ultimately, we want to understand how people are feeling and experiencing us. That's why when Sandy talks about creativity here in, a, in the next 45 minutes or so, you want to pay really close attention because your creativity is what's gonna set the stage for your brand. 
it's literally like the thing. Like that's what you want. You want to pay attention to what Sandy's talking about. She's helped us on some things. She's helped me on some things. And I've just, you know, gone, going through her content. I'm just like, whoa, this is a big deal. And this is what separates us from others is our story and our creativity. Who is your who is a big deal. So we want to pay attention to that. That's a part of how you set your brand will be determined by who you really are on an authentic level and who your audience is that you're serving. Those are the two things that's going to kind of set the experiences and the, and the culture of your brand. Okay. So we want to be really clear who we're serving. Like, for example, we serve causes, companies, and community leaders doing good in the world. That's their psychographic. They're generally on mission. They're leading some kind of organization and they're philanthropic and mission driven. That's our who, that's who we serve. You might have something else slightly different or similar or whatever, but the point is you gotta know when you're on the phone or a Zoom chat or in person with somebody, you gotta know if you're talking to your audience who you generally have a genius to serve. And so that, that's, what, that's why we asked the question, who is your who? By the way, that phrase came from Pedro Adayo, a brilliant marketing evangelist type. The three C's of branding, and you could even call this the three C's of marketing. Some people think of it that way, but at, le at least when you're evaluating your own brand, your style of, ex of, of engaging your audience, you want to think of, of it in, almost in terms of a personality. Your brand is almost a personality. It's like how people experience you on multiple levels with all of our five senses and all that. We'll talk about that in a second, but are you more of a clarity person? Are you more of a creativity person, which is what Sandy's going to talk about? Are you more of a consistency person? Be real with that. Now, look, we're all creative, okay? Sandy's going to talk about that. Like, we, we can all pull out creativity, but the question is, is that your actual superpower to the world if, if, you, if you could do nothing else but be creative or be clear or be consistent which one of those is more, more readily available quickly on, a, you know, on an ongoing basis? Which one kind of describes you in a natural state? And, and, and I want to encourage everyone to, to increase in all of these, but know what your natural superpower is without even trying. What, what brings you energy? Are you, are, are you someone who is more... more more focused on clarity of language and messaging? Uh, are you just always in a state of creativity like Sandy might be? Or, or are you a consistent person who's like, hey, let's get this organized, administrative, uh, let's, let's, let's do. Ultimately, here's the bottom line. You're, you're very rarely gonna be really good at all three of these in the same hour or day. So ask yourself, which one is your happy place? and then delegate the rest, <laughs> or at least at least collaborate with the rest, depending on what you're able to do. So your brain will reflect kind of one of those strengths generally, okay? There are some brands, I think you would agree, Sandy, that are way more creative. It's like it just oozes out of them. It's like they must have like turned on a switch. They must have talked to you or something. Like the creativity just kind of came out of almost nowhere. It just always comes, right? So we want, to, we want to encourage people to lean into those strengths. All right, sensory branding. Now, remember, this all relates to your brand. This is the deeper psychological and, and, and emotional aspects of your brand, essentially is what we're talking about. The sights, the sounds, the smells, the taste, the touches that happen. If you're in person, you, you get to experience all five of these. If you're on Zoom like we are right now or on a Live stream, you get to experience the first two. And we'll take it. Like, we'll take what we can get, okay? If it's just a picture or if it's just auditory sound, you're going to have some impact, but it's not going to be nearly what, like, a video would be. And so that's why we've chosen instead. Of, back in the early days, I don't know if everybody listening maybe had this experience. We would have just audio calls, kind of a mastermind just phone call. And we'd all get on the phone, have a, you know, a mastermind phone call. Everybody would kind of chip into the conversation. We'd, we'd learn a lot. It would be great, but it's not nearly as effective 
that's having a similar kind of conversation or training uh, on Zoom like we're having right now. This is way more powerful because you can see body language. You can see people's creativity behind their screens. You can see little nuances. They're, how they're actually, the, the, the tones that connect to the body language. They say that body language alone is like 55 to 65% of communication. So to have a video moving picture basically be able to help communicate is super important. That's why one of our first assignments is gonna be video driven. All right, so what's, what's authority branding? Well, let's just keep it simple, ladies and gentlemen. It's spending time with the people you wanna be like. It's spending time with the people you wanna work with. It's spending time with the people you wanna be associated with. That's what authority branding is. It, and it's not fake. It's not weird. It's super authentic. It's like, if you wanna be in the room with somebody and be associated with them, then find a way to get in that room. Some people pay for access to be in a room and some people just find a way to get in the room. Either way, whoever you're associating with will allow you to have that type of authority when it comes to your own brand. You're, you're collaborating with others. And that's one of the reasons we love network is because you can collaborate with dozens and dozens of others. Uh, I know Vicki, you're a part of some larger organizations. Sandy, I know you're probably a part of some larger organizations. Collectively, there's an authority in that network or in that organization. And so the people in there are going to associate with you. You're going to associate with them. There's a goodwill that's kind of developed, in some cases, internationally, depending on the organization. All right, here's your micro assignment around branding. And if you have any questions about around branding, pop them in the chat box or the comments, and we're going to keep uh, tabs on that and make sure we answer those at some point. Please ask any questions around anything we've talked about when it comes to definition or details around your brand. All right. I got to tell a story about, about this piece right here. I was working with a client one-on-one -on -one yesterday. And he, he said, I could share this story. I'm not going to name his name, but he's been in his industry for almost 20 years. And he, he, he knows his story but we had a one hour session and we dug deep on this one, one thing right here. The guy went to a place in his deeper storytelling abilities in one hour. He was literally like weeping in the middle of our session because the power of that story to him and then to his audience, because we recorded it after he got a kind of got himself together and he re-recorded it and re-recorded it and re-recorded it until we got a really good recording that, that we could, you know, publicize, right? Once he could get through it, <laughs> which was awesome, once he could get through it, this origin story literally is the, you know, the one of maybe a couple of, a couple, three things that will separate him from everybody else in his industry worldwide. His origin story is, is I like to say it this way, it's the most powerful use of one minute on the planet when it comes to your branding, okay, when it comes to your marketing. If you can tell your origin story in a succinct and interesting way that makes sure people understand where you're coming from, where there's an aha moment, and why and how you're helping your people, you will capture the attention of those listening or watching. Um, for me, my origin story was I was buying, building, selling small businesses for years, also involved in community leadership, love, love, love giving back to community in multiple ways, and found that it was just difficult to scale or market those organizations on, on, a, on a moderate budget. Uh, I would either need to hire somebody that had a high overhead, and it would cost a pretty penny, or I would hire somebody from like, like Upwork or a friend of a friend who was just doing it on the side. And it was hard to get them. Um, it, was, it was hard to get them to stay around for long periods of time because they were like, move, like, it's like herding cats. You weren't sure where they were going to be three months from now. So we ended up starting a network where we offer those marketing type services collectively to causes and companies and community leaders doing good in the world. 
And that's my story and how it relates to our brand as Giver Marketing Network. I've shared that a version of that story multiple times, hundreds of times probably. And it, it, it has slightly different language depending on who I'm talking to or what mood I'm in, but it's generally the same origin story. That's It's the truth. That's the authenticity of that. I can leave out or add different pieces to that origin story anytime I want. When somebody asks me what I do, I tell them that story. I don't tell them what I do. I tell them where I came from, where the aha moment was, why we're doing what we're doing. And I might tell them a little bit about what, you know, what we actually do, but mostly it's around that story. I'll pepper in a little bit here and there, but at the end of the day, people want to know who you are, why you're doing what you're doing, your background, are you trustworthy? What's, what's driving you? Why, why is this a passion? Do you actually care about what you're doing? Do you, do you know who you're serving? They, they, that's what they want to know. If they're just wanting to know what you do, point, point them to some um, list online where it's you and like 500 other people that do the same thing. Tell your origin story. Very, very, very powerful. That is probably the most impactful uh, aspect of this training on the marketing piece, okay? So branding micro assignment is, is post a one minute intro video of your origin story to the group that you see here on the screen. And we'll put the group in the VIP Zoom room and chat. If you're watching this live, you're already in the group. So just pass, just, just uh, post a one minute video of your origin story. And here it is again. Everybody asks, oh, wait, 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 don't, don't go by that slide. I, I want to make sure and do my micro assignment. So here it is. Take a screenshot, do whatever you need to do. But it's literally two pieces. It's your background with an aha moment. Why and how you help your who. By the way, the more you practice this, the better people will engage with you when you're on a podcast, when you're doing a keynote talk. So, uh, based on that session with the gentleman yesterday, he's going to put this as the first, the preface of his new book is going to be his origin story. And so like, no matter what you're doing marketing wise, your origin story needs to be in there. Vicki, when you're, when you're talking to people about your services, you need to share, continue to keep, keep sharing with them your background, where you came from, why you love doing what you're doing. Sandy, same thing as you talk about creativity and pulling that out. We, want, we all want to do that. Stacy's been practicing too. I've been practicing. We're all practicing. I mean, we're like doctors. We're all practicing. You know what I mean? With what we're doing, we're improving all the time. But ultimately, we want that story to be front and center. Facebook and other platforms have even a section, right? You know, about, bio, your story. Like anything, any about section should include your story on your websites, your pages, everywhere, Okay. Vicki, even like the bio sections of some of the directories and the listings and things you've been helping us with, like there should be some aspect of our story kind of built into that. If there's room, right? If there's enough space there, we should at least try to do that as much as we can. Yeah. All right. So this is this is visibility, Vicki's domain. She's helped us with this quite a bit, but we're just going to bring it right down to brass tacks. Super practical. This is pillar number two. Visibility is basically answering one question. Can you be found quickly? <laughs> can you be found in general? But, but really in today's world, it's can you be found quickly? <laughs> that, that's, that's kind of the key because we have like, you know, three to seven seconds of people's, three to three se seconds of people's attention. If we already know them, maybe, maybe up to seven seconds. <laughs> if they're searching around for us or trying to find their, our number and their phone or trying to find this or trying to find that. Like, honestly, no matter what it takes, we just want people to have easy pathways to connect with us and contact us. So can you be found? A good exercise, type in your own name, your first name, your industry, and the city that you're based in, and see if you come up in a positive way online. Now, if you want to get really nerdy with it, go into the incognito guest mode search, because then you're going to get a real, like a true picture of how you're being found online. But ultimately, it's just interesting to type in your first name, your industry, and kind of the city you're based in, your home base, if you will, and see if you show up 
properly and go from there. And if you have any questions about that, you can talk to Vis Vicki Christensen. She'll, she'll walk you through more of that. All right, website. That's your real estate. That's a part of your visibility. That's the, the part of visibility that you technically own. Once you buy your domain, you have a space on the World Wide Web, but there's other platforms that are just as powerful, if not more powerful in some cases, just depending on your industry and kind of stage of business. But you wanna definitely get a Google My Business page. Thank you, Vicky, for that. Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, some of these other platforms, you wanna at least be listed on them. And then there's even other directories too that aren't, aren't even listed here that um, there's probably, what, what, two or three dozen of them, at least, Vicky, that minimum, you just need to kind of get listed on directly. Is that is that about where we are now? Good. So ultimately, if you have the time to kind of go through those and make sure and copy, paste, copy, paste the exact same information, then that'll help you kind of get started with your visibility online. Okay. There's a directory tool that'll help you do that. Um, givermarketing.com slash visibility will help you get to those directory listings and kind of get a, a lay of the land and see how you're doing, okay? Because almost probably over nine out of 10 people go online before making a buying decision in today's modern world, uh, we need to make sure that we're listed properly and that Google's not penalizing us. Big deal, right? I know I'm talking a little bit in the weeds here, but we don't want somebody to look for us and then they just can't find us. Like that, that would be the worst. Like <laughs> they finally get excited to connect with you and they can't stink and find the right information. <laughs> like that's like more frustrating than anything, I think <laughs> it seems like. So here's what the tool looks like that we just gave you uh, no cost access to. Some companies will charge, you know, quite a bit to walk you, you know, like make sure that you have access to this tool. But because of Vicky and, uh, and, and our collaboration within the network, we're able to offer this to you at no cost so you can at least see what's going on. If you need some help for a small fee, Vicki can help you with that too. But ultimately, we wanna try for a zero error rate. So if you use this tool and you got you know, more than a zero error rate, you definitely wanna chip away at this and get, the, get yourself lined up online, okay? All right, here's another fun tool that helps you get reviews. Now, it's one thing to have, uh, you know, two or three people give you some, some kind words online, but it's another thing to have dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of people saying similar things and just raving about you. And the key to this is making it easy. So there's a tool. If you go to givermarketing.com slash gbox, the letter G, the word box, no spaces or anything, just givermarketing.com slash gbox. You'll have, it's a third party tool. You'll have access to be able to generate your own Google review link that has some automation features to it where it'll, in many cases, it'll pop up a box that makes it easy for people to write a quick review. It looks like this. You've probably seen this before if you've done a Google review, but it makes it really easy for your friends, family, associates, clients, everybody else to kind of Kind of give you some kind words online. And by the way, that's what that's how you should ask for it. Ask for kind words. Don't ask for reviews. Even though it's it is technically a review, we're not asking for critical feedback on a public forum here. That's not what we're doing. We're asking for kind words. So so be real with people. Hey, can you say something nice about me online? I'd appreciate it. We've been working together and like can can you help me out? Great. So that's that's how we've helped you know some of our clients get 300 plus five star reviews. We've had we have over 500 we have over 100 five star reviews ourselves and you know our network if you count all of our network members we probably have over 1000 five star reviews probably. It just depends on on how deep you go into the network. But ultimately we want dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of these five star reviews with kind words happening all over the place and that's a good way to start. All right. Going going real Real practical on visibility. It's not always about just being online, the online visibility, even though that's like, it seems like that's about 90% of everything we do now. There's still other aspects of visibility, like 
the lettering on a vehicle, the license, uh, like custom license plates, lettering at your office or a shared space, or how easy is it to get to your location? When you meet with somebody, where are you meeting them? Like some of this stuff is just practical, like, okay, how easy is it for us to get together? That's a part of visibility and making sure that you're easily found and easily met with and easily connected with and all that. So we put that all under the umbrella, the large umbrella of visibility. Um, we, we love custom license plates around here. I used to have a 350Z, it looked just like this. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. Somebody sent this to me as a gift. And I had a custom license plate on the back, it said Giver Marketing. And so just little things like that, you can, you can have a, a, that type of visibility locally around, around town if you want to. And that doesn't cost too much to have a little bit extra visibility as you're driving around. Um, all right, your micro assignment is to use that visibility scan that we just mentioned before. It's givermarketing.com slash visibility. And that'll give you access to that no cost tool to get you kind of, kind of a, an idea of where you're listed properly and where you're not. And then that way you have a game plan of what you need to do. And then um, if you have any questions, you can ask Vicki Christensen for help on improving that, okay? Promotion. This is where every, many companies start with promotion. They forget about branding and visibility for a minute and they go, they jump right into promotion. And it's probably because they're excited and they're, they know they have something to offer the world. And it's, it's probably, it's, it's, most of the time it's good intentions and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. However, I wouldn't personally put too much money or time into promotion until your branding and visibility are dialed in at least to a B plus level, at least that. Like be proud of, of your brand and your visibility before you start pouring money and time and too much promotion. But once you've done that, branding and visibility have kind of been check, check, check those boxes. Then once you start promoting, let's keep it simple. I have a mentor of mine. He says, keep it super simple. Kiss method, right? Inform, give a call to action and engage. This is, this is almost all you need when it comes to promotion. Just make sure you're informing, giving a call, to it, like an easy call to action, a next step, if you will, and then a, a really strategic and systematic way to engage and follow up and stay connected with that person. These are the three things, if you think of the acrostic ice, that will help you with your promotion, okay? Informing is more of a monologue. Call to action is, is really just a next step. Engaging is more of a dialogue. So you want to move from monologue to dialogue. That's one way to think about it. And that, that kind of that, that, that those steps are the way, the, the way in which you do that. Okay. In today's modern world, just throwing up a billboard is not enough. Like you need to have some kind of dialogue that starts in the process very early. Don't gamble. Start with the goals in mind and work backwards from those goals. We oftentimes ask people for recordings of their sales meetings so that we can reverse engineer the, the marketing so that it makes sense for when they show up to the sales or decision meeting. And so you wanna think of, about re reverse engineering a lot of this. Mar marketing is basically a series of experiments to build trust and you, know, you test, change and repeat. And then once they get into the decision meeting, you start seeing higher and higher closing rates. And, and higher, higher alignment in those conversations as you go along, because you have a real um, congruency with your marketing and your sales. The report method is a fun little way to, it's just like a checklist almost of different ways you can promote. Most companies, large and small, will have a referral strategy built into their company. If you don't, like, that's number one. You need to do that, like right now. Like ask people at a certain part in the buying journey, ask them for a referral. Ask them for not only reviews online or, or kind words online, but ask them for those referrals kind of at a, in a similar part of the process, most likely. If somebody is willing to go online and say kind words about you, they're probably willing to share that with a friend. 
So th those are connected. Reviews and referrals are, are, are highly connected. Events, print, online, radio, podcast, television. Hey, experiment with one or two of these and get really good at them and you'll probably double your revenue. <laughs> I mean, let's just be real. Once you got your branding, your visibility dialed in, and then you start promoting in a laser focused fashion like this, pick one or two of these and just go. I know, I know some companies that are generating seven figures a year, over a million dollars a year by just referrals and maybe a, a little bit of online, like social media uh, activity. So they just pick one or two of these and they've gone all in. I know Sandy, you and I have talked a little bit about that and just how to keep it really simple and just kind of just go with the, the warm crowd and just make it easy. So you're not having to fight tooth and nail for a sale. <laughs> like, let's just go with the people that want to work with you. <laughs> let's just talk to those people. All right, promotion, um, micro assignment is basically to post any kind of promotional piece. It could be a picture of your of a business card, like a design of a business card. It could be a recording of a podcast. It could be this training right here for Sandy and Vicky and others. Like this technically is a, is a type of promotional activity. It's also very informative, but it's also has a promotional aspect to it. So anything that you've done that kind of gets you out there, um, post that a screenshot or a link or something, a picture, something in the, private Facebook group, and then you'll earn some, uh, you will be on your way to earning those rewards. All right, last piece, and we're running out of time. We're doing okay, I guess, but let, let's, go, let's go through nurturing really quickly. This is the fourth pillar to your marketing foundation. Some people call it a strategy, but it's really more the foundation for the strategy. It's the blueprint to build the house. It's not actually the, the, it's not actually the high level, like the, the detailed strategy. It's the foundation to build your strategy. It's the blueprint to build the house. Does that make sense? It, some people call this a strategy, but it's, it's really just foundations. Like if we don't have these things, we probably shouldn't be getting too detailed on our strategy yet. Does that make sense? It's like pre-strategy. <laughs> like this is, this is the non-negotiables. All right, so once you have branding, visibility, promotion going, by the way, we didn't used to have this module, this fourth piece in our Giver Marketing Blueprint, but so many people started asking for it. They're like, okay, we got all these conversations going. We got all this, like these leads and like, oh, like it's working. Like the, the first three parts of the blueprint, once we started promotion, the, the faucet just turned on. Like, what do we do? Holy smokes. Like, how do we figure this out? Well, it's all about follow-up and nurturing and and these moments that happen right as they st first start to engage with you. This is the, this, this will take your, your sales from like one or 2% closing rate to like 13, 14, 15% and more. This right here, this nurturing piece is, is where you kind of, you're sifting for that golden connection, that alignment with the people that you're talking to, right? All right, a follow-up system to nurture your prospects. 80% of sales or decision appointments, we, sometimes we call them decision meetings, occur after a minimum of five trust building interactions. So for those people out there who expect to have like one or two interactions and they're gonna buy something from you in today's modern world, they're stuck in 1999. It's a different world. We, we, there's so much on the marketing side that has to be done before a decision meeting happens properly that uh, it, it, it's, hard, it's hard when you're used to something like, oh yeah, I just have two conversations with somebody real quickly and then they buy something. It's like, okay, that happens when, when this process is done really well, they're ready. They're the one or 2%. What about the other 13%? or the other at least 10% that aren't ready right this second, but they need some more nurturing. What about those people? Let's not leave, let's not push them off the table. Let's keep them on the table, right? So, okay, 80% of, of these decision meetings happen after a few interactions. What are those interactions? Well, let's be, let's be real. First impressions, very important. Your introduction. 
the first time they actually connect with you and communicate with you on, on really any basic level, we want to make sure we're not selling them too early, okay? Unless they've asked to, to, to be sold, we're not, we're not, we don't have the right to do that. Uh, we're, we have some team members that are really good at like Facebook ads and those kind of things, but those are interruption se selling and marketing um, avenues, unless you're retargeting. That's different. And the, and the conversion rate on retargeting, many of us know in the room is like literally like five times, 10 times what it is when you just go cold to a list. And you're like, hey, buy my stuff. And it's like, okay, maybe 1% is ready. And 1% of 1% will actually buy from that ad. So you need thousands of, of ads in order to get like one sale or thousands of impressions to get one sale. So you wanna be really careful not to jump too far into like, I can just do this, these kind of ads or these kind of ads and not have a, like a, a nurturing process in place or a, a, a foundation in place. So introduction, don't sell anything. Tell a story if you can. If I, if we're looking at some Facebook ads and different things right now, it, if, if, if I were to recommend one thing for any kind of promotion, organic or paid, it's somehow get your story out in front of people. Just get your story is in front of as many eyeballs as you can. Get their contact information, obviously. Send them a brief email so they know how to get back to you. Maybe ask a question, start a dialogue. Emails without some kind of value or question end up dead in the water. There's no next step. You pitch them something, and they don't really, it's either a yes or a no and they're done. Well, why not start a dialogue? Ask them, you know, ask, ask them what they think of this or they think of that, or based on our last conversation, I noticed this, can I help you with this? Any kind of question will keep the dialogue going. Social media, similar thing, but social media connection request alone, just that alone is a touch because they have context, they see your face, they see your bio, they see every, a little bit of your story, they see a little bit of everything. So even if they don't accept your connection request on social media, that's still a touch because it came in as a request. It's like knocking on the door or it's like, you know, it's like the old school phone call, like ring, ring, ring. Like just, just requesting to connect with somebody is a touch. Now, if they say yes, that's a, that's a, a micro decision. That's a micro yes as you go into conversation. And you're not trying to be a fake friend or anything like that. You're, you're literally wanting to be an associate of some kind with these people. Uh, you want to serve them in some way. You're not being disingenuous. Utilize your, your social media platforms to be able to connect with the people you really want to work with, especially if you're heavy into organic, which many of us are. Give, give something they value. Don't just push what you value, give something they value. So if you're really smart about your audience, you're gonna be very clear about the fact that this is for a very specific person or a group of people. They're gonna be asking for it. You can give them physical gifts, recommendations, referrals, information, resources, obviously. Just don't inundate people that aren't really wanting to be inundated. <laughs> Make sure there's a permission that's built into that, right? Uh, or, or at least some kind of desire that you, you're aware of. Invite somewhere you're already gonna be. So like these combination master classes or 30 day challenges, uh, the events you put on. I know Sandy put this out to a bunch of her people. Uh, you know, Vicky, when you do different things, you're doing some, we're, we're preparing for a big summit coming up the second Thursday in January. Like, we're super pumped about inviting people to these rooms, right? Well, why go through all the effort to be a guest presenter or a speaker or, or put a slide deck together or do a presentation of any kind and not invite people to the room? Like that shows credibility for you. Like, like do it, like get on it, right? Uh, personal note, send out the old school snail mail. Just make sure it doesn't look like junk mail. Do a handwritten card or a different color card or do something that kind of stands out. A text message, keep it short. 
just have a conversation. If you're going to do text messaging and social media messaging, just keep it short. Have a con like a real authentic human conversation. Like you're not a robot. Don't don't act like one. Like you can use automation to start a conversation, but just keep it very real and authentic as you as you go along. A phone call should be, you know, pretty short, 10, 15 minutes. Very rarely are we going to pick up the phone, call somebody and close them on a phone call. Especially if it's in the first few conversations, like maybe like after four or five interactions, you've already been on Zoom, you've already had a meeting with them, a decision meeting, you're just following up to kind of get a yes or something that that's, that's, that's different. But I'm talking about a phone call as an actual marketing and a follow up touch that uh, is designed to kind of help people go to the, you know, the next step. Very rarely do you close a deal on a phone call. It's usually a Zoom chat or in person, especially for higher ticket items. Um, a phone call could could be a follow up to a Zoom, I guess. But when you're when you're ultimately just shooting for like a discovery call or a 10 minute, 10, 15 minute quick get to know you or a story swapping call. This this is where you want to keep it short. Don't leave long voicemails if they don't answer. Don't chase them too much like just give them opportunity to circle back with you but don't chase too hard otherwise people will pick up on your sales breath <laughs> and we don't want that all right nurturing micro assignment your fourth assignment having to do with the fourth pillar is to post your nurturing touch points in the group page you probably already have four or five nurturing touch points in your head right now based on what we just talked about i just gave you seven so if you just pick four or five of those and say, these are my preferred methods of following up with people, then that'll qualify. Just type it in, take a screenshot out of, screenshot of the ones you like or however you want to do it. Just get them in there so we know what your follow-up system is, your nurturing system is, and then we'll give you feedback. We'll just say, oh, okay, sounds good. So you, you like to do phone calls first, then this, then that, or this order, like, why is it that you're, you're, you're doing it in that order? We're super curious. Like we'll have dialogue with you if you post your nurturing micro assignments. Um, unless, you know, either, either way we wanna see it. We just wanna see what you're doing so that we can get, help you along the way, okay? That's it, ladies and gentlemen, move at the speed of trust. These are your four micro assignments from session number one, also known as the first hour of the combination masterclass with Sandy Parker. So this is what my gift to you is a foundation for your marketing so that you're not wasting time or money on bells and whistles out there that are coming at you all over the place telling you that if you just buy this for $5,000, you're going to get everything you want and it's all going to be automated. Hmm. Well, first of all, automation doesn't work without a foundation. So let's build the foundation first, then build in little pieces of automation that help eliminate double entry or you know, follow-up systems, triggers. We can do all that. But if you don't have the foundation, your automation is worthless. Absolutely 100% worthless without a foundation. And I would say it this way, without marketing foundations, you don't have a business. You have a, a side hustle, or a solopreneur venture that you're trying to close a couple of de deals. But if you don't have a systems around this marketing stuff, you really don't have an, an asset. It's not, it's, not, it's not a sellable asset for sure. And so these marketing foundations are key if you wanna build something you're proud of, okay? So there's session number one of a 30 day challenge. And technically there's only four sessions. So you've already completed one of those. And if you wanna continue, then feel free to, uh, if you're a marketing professional, you can schedule an appointment here or better yet, just sign up givermarketing.com slash challenge and then go to session number two, which is next Tuesday. We meet every Tuesday, so we make it super simple and we only meet once a week. So there you go. All right, I left a few minutes for questions and answers. Does anybody have any questions? Stacy, do you see anything in the comments on Facebook? Anybody, Gabe, Vicki, any comments, feedback, thoughts? Sandy, do you have any thoughts as we kind of prepare for your session, which is coming up here in about five minutes? 
No, oh, I don't. I don't see any um, questions either on Facebook or in the live Zoom chat. So, yeah. All right. Well, there you go. So, uh, go to givermarketing.com slash challenge. We're gonna take a a break here soon. But Sandy, can you share with us just a little like teaser of what we're gonna be experiencing here in the next hour from you as we dive in? I can. And first of all, I want to say thank you so much, Timothy. This is incredible information. And you've been a great help to me, as you know. And uh, we're the kind of people that like to give back. So um, what's coming up, first of all, you don't want to miss because we're going to have a blast. And we're going to do a couple of things like what is create? look at what is creativity what's in it for you, what's in it for business, what is it that we really create, mm. and 11 tips and tricks, because it's 11-11. Come on, that's too fun, that's too fun, yeah. I love that, I love that. Yeah. Uh, all right, so here we go, ladies and gentlemen, pit stop, and second leg of the journey, and, here, and we're going to have some fun, so stay with us. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. In fact, I'm going to put up a little break slide. That way everybody knows it's break time. And I'll be right back also. I can't wait to be with you. All right. We'll just take a quick break and we'll be back in just a few minutes.
All right, Sandy, let's bring up your uh, your slide deck just to make sure that's coming up. And Stacy, you'll help us if we're having any issues. But I think we should be okay. Yay, there it is. And it's full screen too, so you're good on my end. Or at least it's, yeah, yeah, it's looking good. I'm excited. Yay. Really great presentation, by the way. Super fun. We, uh, it's just a privilege to work with you and kind of kind of lock arms here and dance a little bit. We, we love it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are top of the hour. We are ready to go. Please turn your video back on if you, if, if you can. If not, then listen in very closely and watch very clearly because uh, I've been through this content and it is good. Here we go. Sandy Parker, tell us a little bit about creative activation and your institute and just kind of how you educate us and help us and bring us alive. Like, how do you bring us alive in, in this way? Okay, I'm going to do that. And I want you to start by in the chat, just put how you honestly feel right now. Like, don't put what you think I want. Like, if you're going, man, that's fine. Or about normal, that's fine. Just post in the chat so I can get an idea of um, where you are. Okay. Going to jump right in. And we're going to start by unmuting. And then I want you guys to be in the conversation with me. Are you willing to do that? Okay, so if you want to unmute yourself, I'm going to ask you questions and then you can answer. So when we look at what is creativity, there are so many messages right now firing out in the, in the LinkedIn world, in the business world, and they're coming at it from all sorts of angles. So I'd like for you to take one of these pictures and say what you think it's saying about creativity. And I get that's like asking you to engage. And the beautiful thing is this isn't Netflix. This is like a conversation. So let's try it. Who's got one? Pick it out and let's look at it. Vicki? Uh, I noticed the light bulb. Why aren't you as creative as you'd like to think? Although I didn't read it that way at first. I read it, why you aren't as creative as you'd like. And that's where I, that's really what I do think. <laughs> and isn't that interesting? There's something buried in there that says why you are as creative as you'd like to think. We'll run across this slide in a minute, but only 50% of people ask, say they think they're creative. Yeah, it seems like all this is kind of leaning towards a little bit of the um, hidden or negative aspects of the fact that we, we aren't something that we maybe want to be. Maybe that, pick, pick out another picture. Like procrastination, the one at the top. It's like, uh, how, how, like how, how does procrastination make you more creative and how come I'm not already creative if I'm already procrastinating on a lot of Well, a things. deadline can help make you creative. Exactly. And you know what? Some people wait to the very last minute because that's how they activate their creativity. Oh, OK. That makes sense. But one of the things this is pointing to is we're hoping something outside of ourselves <laughs> is going to activate creativity. Mm. Right. Let's do one or two more. I'll do one my favorite. And it is this pencil sharpener jar quantifies your creative output. So there's a sharpener in the top. And if it's really full, you're a workaholic. And if it has hardly any in it, you're an underachiever. So we actually measure our own creativity by what's outside of us that we've produced. OK, to, or uh, Stacy, pick one. Uh, wants to understand creativity and list in an A I collaborator. Yep. So, you know, artificial intelligence is yep. the big thing, right? 
something outside of ourselves is going to do some thinking for us and it's going to help us understand our own creativity. And I'll just pick one more. And it's this one with the little eye. It says, creative people really do see the world differently. The message is there are creative people and there are not creative people. And we know that there is a creator. We know that we are in the image of a creator, creators. But boy, are there some misnotions about what creativity is. So I wanted to start there because the messages out in the world are so confusing. I don't even know what creativity is anymore. So I made it up all by myself. Seth Godin said this, I love it. Creativity is the magical human act, which we could also write the supernatural human act of doing something that might not work. If you know it's gonna work, it's management. But when we talk about activating creativity in the workplace, what sometimes they want is for us to be manageable. So they like the idea of out of the box thinking, but really they like us to be in the cubicle while we're doing our out of the box thinking. This is my favorite quote. Don't ask the world what it needs or don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go do that. Because mm. what the world really needs is a few more people who've come alive. And you get your choice. Do you want to be on the front row? Check out the chicks in the back, like looking what's in their purse. So creativity is about what road do you want to live on? I did what you said, Timothy, and I went to Google and looked up, what does it say about Sandy Parker, Austin, Texas? And you'll notice, and if you know me, of course, I'm Creative Activation Institute. I'm involved in landmark training. I'm active on Facebook. I also have a Texas Fun Club. And I also wrote a book about Lumi the Lightning Bug. So I've been around creativity all my life. So I'm creative coming to a moment in time where I think creativity matters more than ever. So I created Creative Activation Institute. Now I've been dealing with people as a coach for years, but boy, when COVID hit, I saw the workplace suffer like never before. People were in grief, they were confused, they were asleep, they were hardly showing up, they were losing their job. I thought, you know what, I'm pivoting and that's why my Google will say everything else and now creative activation. So we provide solutions for productivity, which could also be called aliveness in the workplace using seven principles of creative activation. The other thing to note in there is creativity is in you. I'm not gonna bring it. We're just gonna try to find ways to activate it. And then the Institute has to do with training people and that's what we do. So our slogan is being creative is being alive. And what we like to measure is aliveness as creativity. So just a little bit about me. I'm a, a can-do-it girl. I mean, my email is Sparker Can. People call me Sparker Can. I, I wanted to be Maria in the Sound of Music. And like the reason this is important because at eight years old, I'm 65. At eight years old, I saw a woman who could be faithful, who could be romantic, who could play the guitar? She could sew and make things out of curtains. She could go on adventures. I said, okay, I was imprinted at a very early age. And since that time, I've created 10 companies. I wrote a Hay House children's book. I've produced events from 15 to 35,000. I made my own wedding dress. I created a jewelry line for 400 stores. 
I've been a comedian on AHA Broadway, and I was in syndicated radio for years. So you can see that I'm just a bubbling fool of creativity. And that's great for me, but how do I bring that to the workplace? We've always known in the culture of workplaces, there's education, appreciation, and celebration. And in giver marketing, I'm sure you do all three, right? You educate people, you appreciate people, and you celebrate people. But in the COVID times, when I asked the CEOs and HR people, what's concerning you? The first row is what they were saying in the summer of 2020. My team is tired and needs inspiration. They're more disconnected than ever before. And I wanna provide support, but it's expensive or stigmatized. Then in January of this year, 2021, it was, okay, now I need to know how to design a post-pandemic workplace, how to maintain whatever forward momentum we have, because we thought COVID was going to end, and you know what? It didn't. And how am I going to build a diverse, equitable, inclusive workforce? So we changed one more time, and now talent recruitment and retention is it. They still care about corporate purpose, DEI, well-being and mental health, and attention to culture. But now they want to keep their people, keep them happy, keep them well, and keep them on board. So check it out. Businesses are starting to see, wow, complex problem solving, critical thinking, and creativity are number one, two, three. Creativity used to be the least wanted job skill. But now we've all learned how to order on a menu with a QR code. Like QR codes, was that 10 years ago? And now all of a sudden, we're all having to adapt. So the results are worth noting. When you add creativity, you access the most underutilized part of your brain, People are more accepting of initiatives and change, and they nurture the mindset of mutuality and togetherness. That's all great, but now we want a competitive edge. You know, McKinsey, the research company, they just came out with this incredible report. Companies who invest or integrate creativity with analytics and purpose are delivering two times the growth of their peers who don't. So now I've got companies calling me going, how do I get creativity? How do I infuse it? How do my people get it? What about the people who don't? It's a whole new ball game in the creativity world. Okay, we got a problem. Like I said, we don't have a well-defined understanding of what it is. We saw that just ourselves. 50% don't think they're creative. And a lot of businesses have been dealing with analytics and purpose, but they have no idea what to do with creativity. And they know it's giving their competitors a massive advantage. So we saw how confusing it is. And do you know Mark Manson? He's an incredible author. He just wrote this book with Will Smith. It's just now available like yesterday. And Will Smith, and he wrote this book, but this quote from Will Smith is saying everything. I'm not gonna read you the whole thing, but there's a couple of parts I really like. Life is learning. If we replace the word life with creativity, it's learning. Overcoming ignorance is the whole point. Starting is the whole point. You're not supposed to know everything at the beginning. And then venturing forth is how we gain creativity. Okay, audience participation again. 
look at this picture and tell me where you see creativity. You can see it in her thought process. She's in deep in thought with that. She's getting ready to make a stroke, but her mind already has that picture. It's just, how does that go from in her mind to that paintbrush to the canvas? Oh, you're so brilliant, Stacy. Who else? What do you see? Where do you see creativity in this picture? Timothy? I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of a, like an action guy. So I see the actual strokes or the, or the, or the action of painting as part of the creativity piece. Okay. How about you, Vicki? Her, her clothes. So you guys, you, your answer was the top three answers. And usually it's the clothes first, then the paintbrush second. And lastly, it's about being in her. And Stacy, you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Because if you really look, there's no creativity in the canvas. There's no creativity in the paintbrush. It's only creativity happens when you say, it's up to me, it's about me, and I'm going in. Yeah. And then where we normally- It hasn't made it to the canvas yet. Yeah, so usually we think of it where it's expressed, like in her clothes or in a painting, but really where creativity is, is in the human being. But we don't normally think of it that way, do we? Back to our premise, being creative is being alive. We have a point of view. Our point of view is being creative sees life not as a series of circumstances or conditions, but a canvas on which you paint your expression, right? At the same time, we're aware that we may not be creative at all, nor able to change anything, but it's the courage to go in. And then being creative is brave. It's putting yourself at risk, joining hands with whatever's about to happen, realizing even failure is a fuel for growth. So when you think about people who create a logo, sure there's Photoshop, sure there's the computer, sure there's whatever they're drawing, but it's within them. So not to beat the horse, but I just wanna really highlight a few pieces. It's not a skill. It's a way of being, and it's a sign of life. If you're not creative, if you're not creating, you're not living. And when I do my TED talk, I'm going to throw this sentence in. How do I know? Because dead people don't create. I have a question for you, Sandy. Go for it. So if create, create, creativity is not a skill, um, but, but it can be drawn out and practiced. How do you just like, how do you distinguish that when you're, cause a yeah. lot of people think in terms of like, I'm just you know, practicing so I can increase my skills. So there's still a practice part of creativity, but it's not necessarily a skill. How do you how do you distinguish that? Great, great question. And going back to being creative as being alive, it's the act of putting yourself in over and over and over that develops a skill, right? Like designing is a skill. Uh, I think Vicki, you're a writer, right? Or you help people with their messaging. Yeah. So by doing that and investing, but it still has a you in it every time. And this is just a point of view as a reference. It doesn't mean no one has skills. It just means if you look at creativity as being, well, like the second one starts with a realization that you have the capacity to create. 
If you don't have that, you won't take action. And I have an exercise in my workshops where I actually pair people up and they say to each other, I have the capacity to create. I'm creating that I can create. And they have to pass and fail each other. I can't tell you how many people go, I'm creating that I can create. I mean, like, it's just, it just occurs to you or it doesn't. And that's something that also can be learned. It's the ability to dance with whatever's about to happen. That stops most people from creating because they go, it won't be good. It won't be like my sister. Why should I practice with the logo? Because they're, they are better than me, right? So we get in this evaluation of who has it, and who doesn't. And then just like what you said, it's an ongoing process. You don't ever get there. And it involves you and your heart, and your mind and your body over time. Now, so what you're, if I'm hearing you right, what you're saying is we all have at least some, you know, we all have, we're creative beings. So we have some capacity to create at some level, and it probably will increase as we practice. But when we start thinking in terms of binary, like I'm creative or I'm not creative, that literally shuts off half the world to their potential. Would you not agree? I, that's what I'm hearing. And, and, and as I say it out loud, I, I, I agree with that. I, I think that's a really insightful way to look at it, Sandy. I think it's a bigger point for companies than what your skills are. You have to have skills. But think back when you were little, when I was making mud pies out of mud, man, I was all in. They were beautiful. I was using my imagination. And if I had the right friend, it was the most delicious mud pie you ever tasted. Then you went to school, you started coloring. Oh, you got out of the lines. So there's kind of this cross happening. At the same time, we should be practicing, practicing, practicing and getting better and better and better. Our limitations as adults are getting more and more and more and more. So, so I'm hearing you also allude to the fact that from an early age people start getting suppressed with certain parts of of their their being or their life including creativity and it it the it plays out in the workplace because it seems like there's some people that have that have embraced the fact that they're creative and now like they're the problem solvers, they're the innovators, they're the inventors, they're the, you know, uh, like inspiring personality types. Like we, we, we start categorizing them, which is helpful in some ways, but it's, it could be hurtful to the rest of the tribe. Yeah, and one of the things I do when I go in a company is look and say, okay, where, which departments need more creativity? Hmm. And they'll it's, go- It's not if they need creativity, it's which departments need more of it. Yeah, but what happens is a lot of times the C-suite level says, well, that would be marketing or that would be HR or that would be design. I'm like, you don't want your leaders in a creativity class? You don't want the five people that run your company to be first, but hmm. even their mindset is a little bit like, well, that we go where the out of the box thinking happens. I'm and thinking then, about some of the most interesting companies, you know, some I've read about recently, like um, Zappos or, I've, you know, how they kind of evolved into what they are. Um, love them or hate them, like some of these trillion dollar companies even, like they're, 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 they're pretty darn, like they, they've, they've embraced this. Like this is our culture. Like this is what we do. If we don't create, we're going to die. They also have created a culture of failing. Uh, good because point. Because when point. we look at what kills creativity, there's a couple of things, but they're real subtle. 
Hmm. Like one of them is the company wants us to create, but not too much. Hmm. They want us to pick the best selling color, but they don't really want us to change the product because they hired us to do what we do well. So we do what we do well. And that's all they really want us to do because that's what we're getting paid for. That's a mindset. Another mindset is, yeah, well, I offered a good idea before and it didn't go anywhere. So it's a cultural subtlety. And even yesterday I had dinner with a CEO and he offered it to his employees. Whoever wants it, I'll pay for it. Who opted in was the creative people because they think they're creative. Because they get the dopamine effect and they get the feedback loop that says, you are this, you can do it, you're doing great. But then there's another group of people that are like, I'm not a musician. I'm not an artist. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm not. They'll literally probably program themselves from an early age. I'm not creative. Yeah, well, we did this amazing exercise. I wish he could have been there. Of course, of course, the CEO didn't come. And uh, we actually, they want to be bought out in eight months by a company. So I put them in breakout rooms and had them all create that that's eight months from now. And we're reminiscing back to the time we were on that Zoom with that crazy creativity letter lady and everything that happened between then and now. They were literally creating that buyout backwards. They would say things like, remember after we did that Zoom, we started creating more teams and we started saying, everybody's creative, what do you have to offer? And then so-and-so happened and then we got bought out. And then I, instead of hourly, I'm now, you know, so, I mean, they literally went ablaze in their mind on this happening backwards. And I texted him, I said, you should see your employees vibrantly alive about you winning in life. It was like a freaking amazing. And he's like, heck yeah, and I wanna go, so why aren't you in the class, right? It's because there's a lot of, anyway, there's a lot of notions. So here's another thing, and this is my um, mission on the planet. I wanna help people understand that they create more than they think. So if I said, what do you create, Stacy? What, so give me a couple of things that you create. But you just know you create them. Um, Craft-wise, I am a creator of uh, when I use yarn and crocheting. Okay. So that's something that I do on my personal time. Okay. And I enjoy teaching other people to do that. Okay. What else? One more. We'll do two each. So that's my personal. And in... Uh, business life, I guess the creating part is um, coming coming through and meeting people and helping them with their messaging to reach their audience. Okay, so you're creating maybe a process or a product or a system. Yeah, usually it's usually it's a messaging uh, sequence that I'm helping okay. them create on and then um, oftentimes I'm executing on that sequence as well. So we work together to create the sequence that will work and then um, yeah, execution on that too. Really clear and by God, bless you my child because that is the most important thing and I, I, I have the hardest time getting nailed down to do that. How about you, Vicki, what do you create? When I say, what do we create? What, what are two things you create? Two things. Oh, two? <laughs> okay, one. Whatever floats you both. <laughs> I, I was or just three. Thinking, I, I I like to create energy and momentum and focus. Okay. Energy, momentum, and awesome. I like you. Let's play together. Okay. <laughs> Timothy, what do you create? What do what is it that we create? You know, I I I would say that one of my happy places is idea generation. So the actual, um, I guess, art and science and, and fun of, of, of brainstorming 
and and almost molding an idea like clay cool is is a really fun fun place i have to sometimes uh take a deep breath and relax from that mode in in certain parts of life but i have plenty of outlets for it so it's super fun um other creative i i don't know that i could I don't know that I could articulate. I, I, I do enjoy creating con uh, like right now we're writing a book. Okay. And I, example. but again, I came up with the concept and brainstormed the, the narrative. And then there's a whole team that's actually ghostwriting it and editing it and leading that like, res like end result of it. Okay, so, so let me just, let me, it's a little bit of a trick question, mm -hmm. and then we're going to dive in the deeper zone, mm -hmm. but I want to just highlight what we think of products and services and solutions and um, systems and companies create products and things right. we want to buy, right? So I'm going to give you three areas where we create that we often don't think about. Okay. And I'm going to tell you a story about the first one. We create who we are. Okay. I'm going to give you an example. I'm 65 and I was married for 25 years to the coolest guy in the whole wide world. I mean, my soulmate. And he died. And I was sad. And we were not funded for him to die. And so now I've got to go get a job. And, I, and who I really was at the time older, a little bit of a has been, been a while since I worked, really didn't have much, I really didn't want to work. And now I've got to. So I created a new me. And I created myself as, so what, I'm a has been, I'm unapologetic. So what, I'm sad. I, I actually have to be, but I am freaking unleashed. And I don't have time to do 4,000 resumes. I got to get a job. So I decided that I'm unreasonable. So every day I said, and in my phone, I put, I'm unapologetic, I'm unreasonable, and I'm unleashed. And when I went through Starbucks, I practiced. I asked the lady, would you please put my coffee half in one cup and half in another cup? Not to torment her, but to get used to the idea that I can be unreasonable. Well, then I got the perfect job interview, right? Down the street, paid great, my skills were a match. I went to the interview, you know, my, 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 yes, I have skills. Da, da, da. He goes, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take some you know, candidates, and we'll let you know next week if you're going to make it, blah, blah, blah. And I said, look, I got to tell you that I am unapologetic, unleashed, and unreasonable. And I actually want to leave this interview with the job starting Monday. Oh, my gosh. He said, you're starting Monday. I tried not to freak out right there. <laughs> but I went outside and I went, hmm. So I had become a creation of who I decided to be. Right? You see now how we can create who we are. Okay, second area of what we don't think of creating is who others are for us. Quick example, my husband was sick for a long time and had a terminal illness. So for a while, I had him in my mind as a sick man, not to bother, not to worry, not to stress out. And I actually was losing my connection with him because, you know, he was over there and I was over here. So I decided that I was going to create who he was for me. He was a giant the coolest cat I ever met. And our last years being together were our best years. 
because I created who he was for me. And you know what? Maybe I made it up. Well, you know what? We make everything up anyway. So who is Timothy Morgan for me? Timothy, I made it up, kind of collected some pieces. And at this point, I don't really know. But who Timothy, who Giver Marketing is for me, who Timothy Morgan is for me, caring people with really great skills who really give a hoot, who will help you when you need it. Now, because I've created who you all are for me, how I interact with you is different. What I request from you is different. What I feel about you is different. And that creation was over here. And then the last area of what we create is our future. A lot like the company that I had on yesterday for our workshop. We created that company as bought out and incredibly successful eight months from now. And it's not even true. But when those people came back talking past tense about what had happened, you know, your brain believes past tense more than the future because we are really sure what happened yesterday, but we're really not sure what's going to happen tomorrow. So when you create your future in past tense, it feels so real. They came back saying, you know what? I feel like we're manifesting something. I'm like, you mean like creating a future? So we don't think in those areas, but if you keep going with it, you create who your children are, you create who the country is, you create what the weather's like. Literally, we're creating every moment of every day. I like that um, perspective. N Nicole, did you have a question? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, Sandy, I wonder, well, Maybe this is, there could be a bias. To Give this. it to me, baby. Give it okay. to me. I mean, I wonder how often this happens to women versus men. I'm sure that there are a lot of midlife crises for both people, uh, men and female. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I, it's like, I've always been so ultra creative and um, I've loved every job I've been at, but I've never gotten them by accident. I've absolutely manifested and scratched and clawed and gotten my way to the jobs that allowed me to think outside the box, but still within the side the box, like at a company like Dell, <laughs> um, for example, very strict. Um, but I'm in a job right now that I had a lot of creative I was given a lot of creative power, uh, uh -huh. but due to pandemic circumstances, they had me wear about 10 different hats. And now I'm in a position with new management where I am, I am, I can't stand in the job I'm doing, but I'm also turning 51. And um, <clears throat> for a long time as a woman in technical sales, I was a, in pharmaceutical sales, and um, I was a person I was supposed to be and life has changed for me dramatically because things have changed for me dramatically and I have to reinvent myself and I don't know how to. <laughs> well, let me just answer a couple of levels there. First of all, we are all reinventing ourselves and sometimes it happens by disaster. Sometimes it happens by transition. My husband died. I didn't pick that out. But you know what? Arguing with reality is a really bad idea. Just going from where you are to where you want to be is a designing process, if you will. Is it a vision board? I mean, I, I, I guess I, I've read so many, you know, uh, attract, so, law of attraction books and, and there's that negative spin where if you don't see it the right way, you can manifest things inappropriately. And with so much disaster around me, I'm afraid that I'll manifest something strange. Or, like, I don't know how to go about the reinvention process. And I'm so stuck in an environment that doesn't get me out of bed in the morning that I don't know how to fix it. 
<laughs> okay, so let me, first of all, let me say we can't solve that right now, but I want to tell you, um, you don't have to fear anything outside of yourself. Like all the disasters that can happen because you create in the wrong way. You know, I think you should just like set that fear aside. I do want to point your attention to something. And that is if I had a boss that didn't want me to create, I literally might go to him. Now, I, I know I sound like amazing, right? But I've been practicing for years. I might go to him and say, I would like to ask you to create me in your mind as someone who thinks outside the box. Can we work on that? Because often you The CEO your originally hired me and then now he brought in, I'm 51 and he brought in like a 25 year old manager who's really good at operations in our job, who's very good at what he does because he thinks very literally, literally, literally yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> Linearly. Oh. Um, and that's good. Um, it's to, he has to look at the day to day, and if he didn't, operations would fail. Mine is to look at the next years out and how to position us with partners and strategic relationships, and to 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 see the bigger picture. So the balance is good. If we were looking, you know, what twenty years ago at Myers Briggs and Carl Jungian's, you know, original philosophy when they were building teams, our team would be very balanced. But my word, I, I don't even bother saying things anymore in meetings because I think people will think I'm... Um, well, first of all, Nicole, let me thank you for bringing that up because what you're discussing is what's real in the workplace. And that's why people are not alive and lit up. Not anymore. <laughs> so let me offer this. You get my, you're going to get my email. Reach out to me. Let's have a phone call. That'd but be great. Thank Thank you for highlighting the reality of what people are living in. And when I go to that company, if they have creativity training, they're going to see whether oh, people are killing the food. money to even buy lunch. So yeah. <laughs> that, that's not going to ever happen. All uh, right. I answered the phones as well as put together the largest deals of the company. So, so, so we're well, like 10 different hats, but it's clear. We said, I want to get fired basically is my other side of it. <laughs> All right, well, hold on, because I think by the end, you're going to get yeah. some tips and tricks. So the point of this is we don't think of creation as this superpower that is ours. I'm going to keep going because I think you get Please, the idea. I don't want to you anymore. Thank you. I also want to tell you an exercise I do, and this is why companies hire me. I did this fun exercise and I should do it with all of us. Everybody raise your right hand just as high as you can. Okay, now raise it just three more inches. Okay, thank you. You can let your hands down. What was the difference between the first time and the second time? It was a nudge. Here's the other fact, people don't create unless they're reminded. If you get nudged to create, like let Timothy's, let's say he's in charge of this company with all this team. If he's had a plan for habits and practices where we all do something at a nudged time, and then like, let's say go outside, take a close up picture of something that you see every day, like a leaf, Come back and post it. When you're nudged to create, you can remember. When you're not nudged, often we don't. So what I do with a company is actually design a plan that includes seven principles and five techniques. And we're not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to just show you what some of the principles are. Start in the top left, detect drift. If you can figure out where you're asleep, you have a chance. If you can't figure out where you're adrift, you're not going to create. I can't create being unleashed, unapologetic, and unreasonable on top of being a sad, mad widow. I have to get flat on where I'm starting from. Then you have to crack out. You have to crack the constraint of it. 
This works for a logo also. Let's say you're playing with a logo and you're kind of going around in a circle in a circle and you're kind of in the same spot. If you can't detect the pattern you're in and then crack it and go crazy out and start doing things like make it twice the size or 14 colors or one color. So crack out, then listen to what yourself is saying, to what your intuition is saying, to what the art is saying, to what people are saying. The next one is liminal space. And the reason I'm going fast is each one of these is its own realm, but liminal space is that area between what you knew and what's next. Remember when COVID started, we go, oh my gosh, we left normal. We're in a zone of what's, we don't know what's next. It's like a trapeze artist letting set go of one handlebar, flying through the air and not quite caught on the next one. Well, if you're the type of person that's uncomfortable with liminal space, you won't let it incubate. You won't let it breathe. You won't let it be wrong. You won't let it just sit there. So how you deal with liminal space is a huge part of it. Then mixology and reverse engineering, that's pretty common, but if you actually take the thing you're designing and undo it all the way to the beginning and then do it all, mixology and reverse engineering, and then being willing to not know. Like I'm online dating. And I've decided that I literally have no idea who I'm looking for. He's going to have to find me. Because if I go for what I had before, I won't find it anyway. And if I live in what I already know, I can't learn anything anyway. You know, there's a big book, uh, Think Again by Adam. I forget his last name. But anyway, it's about how to rethink things. That we're stuck in the way we think we know. So that's a big realm. And then the last realm is play. Just play like you're making a mud pie. Like one of the ideas with the logo might be sit down with an idea and do 50 versions in 10 minutes. Craziest ones you can think of. Just play, 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 play. So those are the realms and then we have techniques. And then what we do is put a plan together for a company so they have habits and practices. But you can do this for yourself. Stacy can say, you know what? I am not practicing creating who I am. And every Thursday at 9 a.m., I'm gonna take 10 minutes and create who I am. Or Vicki might say, you know what? I haven't changed my homepage in two years. I'm just going to take every Friday at 10 a.m. and pretend I'm changing the whole thing. But establishing habits and practices is where that ongoing act of creating, you were talking about, Timothy, that's where it shows up. And then I have a diversity of options from Spark, Ignite, Expand, and I'm creating a community of people who want to be nudged together. It's called a cohort group where we all align ourselves with, yep, I'm going to have habits and practices and we're going to practice. Now, I promised you 11 tips and tricks. Before we jump in here, does anybody have any questions about this enormous world we just talked about? I like how you said it can be applied individually and then collectively. I think that's important to remember when, work, when we're working with you. So I'm just gonna go back. Remember when we did our mood? Put in the chat now just how you, what your energy level is, how you feel on a one, two, three, four, five. I resonated a lot with everything that you were saying. And Say that one a, more time. I resonated a lot with everything that you've been saying because um, personally, I've gone through a lot of this, but also as stepping up and being 
um, such a huge part of the Giver Marketing Network and helping everyone. Uh, yeah, it's definitely, I resonate with so much of what you're saying because I've pulled out some creative thoughts and um, ways that I do things that I never thought about before I joined this network because I'm collaborating with so many amazing people around me that have different talents. And isn't that aliveness? What work can be like? Yes. I mean, we can. It doesn't feel here. like work. Like even if we go through times, even if we have a, a road bump that we need to bump over, it's not like in other workplaces or in other teams I've worked with. It's been like daunting and draining, and you don't want to go back to that person, or you don't want to go back to the team to figure it out because you just don't want to deal with what their answer is going to be. But I don't feel that with our network and that's one of the special sauces and that's what I uh that's where I think our creativity all comes together with all of us who are who are in the network for sure yeah and, and what you're saying is so important because the culture of everyone belonging and the culture that everyone can create and contribute and collaborate in my mind and what you just said gives people the the opportunity to be fully alive at work. And we heard the suffering that happens when you don't have that. And that suffering in my a LinkedIn profile, it says I'm the fairy godmother of business, helping people not suffer at work. That's the benefit of a fairy godmother is nobody suffers, right? Suffering is not where it's at for the workplace, if you ask me. That's what I'm. That's what I'm committed to. That's a great book, Nudge. I actually learned that nudging is a generous act, and uh, you can actually place nudges in your calendar, in your schedule, in your meetings. I mean, just don't be afraid to nudge one another. And then I want to show you the tips and tricks. And what I recommend is that you don't try to write this down, and you don't try to find the link right now because then you'll miss what we're gonna talk about. First of all, if you take my quiz, how creative are you? The questions alone are gonna open something for you. Send out cards as a service. If you ask me, I'll give you a, a link. You can send out a card to someone. Express your gratitude, ex share, connect with a person. You can't do that without creating who they are for you. We talked about creating backwards. Here's another fun game that you can play in a meeting and that's everybody must go become an expert in something in two minutes, come back and report. It could be on transmission systems when you don't know a thing about it and you have to come back and report on it. it could be on microbiology and some more, but going and becoming an expert just because you have to opens the field of creativity. Another one is have a fail party. There's a big culture around failing in startups. And in Europe, they have these big meetings where people come, take the stage one at the time and talk about their biggest fail. And what it does is take the edge off failing. Pictionary, it sounds simple, but you can do it on Zoom now. There's an app called High Future Self. And it's an app you download and you literally send yourself messages in the future of how you want to be. So like I knew this was coming on 11-11. So this morning I got a notification that said, remember to be magical. You're a fairy godmother. Don't let it be about how you're performing. Let it be about the people you're with. But I designed that two weeks ago. And I can remind myself or nudge myself how I want to be. Pick collage. Uh, this is a practice I have. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 o'clock, I stop. Ask myself, how does the world seem to me? Like one day, it was like, it seems like I can never get anything done. One day, it was, it seems like it's just the start of something great. One day, it was, it seems like. I'm buried a lot, right? Whatever that is, go to Pig Collage, grab some pictures off Google and make yourself a freeze frame of the moment. And what happens is 
you get understood by a picture and it does something for you. Uh, send a video. If I said, okay, on Thursdays, I'm going to send a video to Vicki and it's going to, and I'm, you know, there you are with your camera. I go, oh my God, what must I do? Uh, hey, Vicki, love meeting you. And I think I remember you do this. Like my brain is just activated. My creativity is activated. Uh, Zen tangles are drawings that you do in a pattern that become amazing. And then uh, my favorite little weird one is I send Morse code to people. And it's like, hey, hey, Stacy, I'm struggling over here. How about you? And it's in Morse code and they have to go to Morse code and read the text. But it creates curiosity. It opens the brain and they go, Morse code. Why would you say, you know, it just interrupts the normal. So there's my email, Sandy at Creative uh, Activation Institute. There's the quiz. Let's see what I've got. That's the end. I put the quiz link in the chat box. If somebody can make sure that works. Okay. And, and, yes, it uh, works. I okay, tested it. I, I put it in a certain way. So if you could pop that into the live stream on Facebook, that'll help everybody else out there. And gosh, Sandy, uh, I have two, like at least Stacy thought of, of the same person that we need to connect you with. Um, that I think you guys can be power partners. Uh, obviously, Nicole and you, you guys are going to connect on, and get deeper on some things. You and I, you know, we're all going to get deeper on some things as we go along. And I thank you for not only presenting this to the world and letting your creativity out and being courageous enough to do that, mm -hmm. um, but also just the benefit that that we're the benefit our our some of our core team that are here right now are gonna have from this and implementing some of these uh, creative moments and creative opportunities and create space for, for uh, an environment for creativity. Uh, I think we could take, take that to another level. And, and you've given us a, a picture of how that could happen. So thank you for that and um, mm -hmm. Look forward to the next time we connect. Anybody have any questions? Any thoughts? What What was your takeaway? Maybe get, let, let's have one or two people just, what was the, the aha moment or the drop mm -hmm. uh, drop into your heart moment that happened? Stacy, you already shared a little bit. Uh, maybe we can circle back to you with a, a real like, like one I sentence just, version of that. But it was really awesome to hear your, your story and how you took a, a struggle in your life and turn this into a business. And you went in and saying, you know, I'm you, what I heard there was basically this company needs me more than I need you. So you walked into that company and you walked into that company with confidence. I did that this week. I had a certain, I had two people that kept coming back to me, kept circling back, kept circling back and they kept, Oh, we have to think about it now. And I finally just named my price and they're like, Oh, like sticker shock at first I was like that's okay if you don't want it you don't want me and basically said to them this is what I can do for you and if you don't want to take that that's fine you can continue to struggle and I just paused pregnant pause like Timothy would say take something and, and then they then they went oh no no that's why we're on this call we've been like trying to connect with you we want to work with you so you know, and it just takes a lot of courageous, like Tim said, to do that. So thank you for sharing that story. And I encourage other people to do that too. Know your worth and know where you are. And the creativity is the first step to learning your worth, I think. Everything you spoke about was just like, wow. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. So much. Thank you. Kind How word. You, Vicky? What a joy. I just thank you. Because I mean, I know most of this stuff, but there was a lot of stuff I didn't know, and I'm grateful to be reminded. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that. Lacey or Nicole, any 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 final thoughts? This is Lacey. Sorry, I was on mute. Sandy, uh, yeah, I I loved hearing your story. Um, I I loved that you pushed yourself and you were creative and you found you know what 
your passions were and that you're sharing that with the group and, and helping everyone to really resonate with their own passions and to push that and push themselves forward. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, sorry, I was answering the phone. <laughs> um, first of all, I would get more creative online dating or what you're doing. You may need to think outside the box with that one. There are a lot of scary people out there. What well, any uh any any uh? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to be funny and just lighten the conversation. Oh, no, that's that's fine. Any I'm nuggets? Joking. Nicole? I'm sure she's doing fantastic. Um, I think the best. Um, I like the circle. Um, I, that, that I didn't. I wasn't taking notes. I was trying to look. I like to review the um slides. So again, it takes a little bit of time to absorb everything. But um, I guess like um, it's a saying. Um, I don't. My friend says it all the time to rehab. But like, make it till you make it, kind of. Make um, it till you make it. Yeah, yeah. make it till you make it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh, sometimes you have to figure out what you're trying to fake first. I guess maybe I'm just at that point. So starting at zero. Yeah, Sandy. Thank you so much for everyone you know inspiring everyone here today and i know that um you and nicole are going to connect another time lacy thank you for your your sum your summary there too i think we all resonate with the inspiration that comes from your courageous and creative journey and so that i think will continue to ripple and uh we're just a few of the folks that are going to be able to watch this and digest this and get inspired by it so god bless you guys We'll Can see you say, next week. What else you got, Sandy? I just as want wrap to up? say, I, I want everybody to reach out, connect, because monologue is not a very creative space. Uh, connect with each other. Connect with me. I would offer anyone a free conversation. So let's let's go make a difference in the world. I hope you're doing LinkedIn and blogs, and you can start charging for the stuff through Instagram because that's my business. So hopefully I can help you. Thank you. Yes, help you each other out. God bless. Look each other up on LinkedIn and Facebook. Thank Talk you. To you, Thank you. Oh, oh okay. are you going to send the names out of who attended so we can do that?